Welcome to the In My Opinion Show with Ronald Barry Robinson and Friends, seen on the internet 24 hours, 7 days a week. The In My Opinion Show is also seen on Flint Comcast Cable Channel 17 every Saturday at 6 and every Wednesday at 8.30. We are also seen in the Detroit Comcast Cable Market on Channel 68, 7 days a week. Consult your uh, community calendar for the for the times. We have a very special we have very special guests uh, today on the In My Opinion show. We have Mr. Joe Gibbons, we have Mr. Pa we have excuse me, we have pa Pastor Williams and we have uh, Ronald Stewart. Welcome all to the In My Opinion show. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to talk about real talk, real action. Okay? Um, the mission statement is to provide goods and services for residents in the Genesee County area, to enhance the quality of life for those citizens who are at the poverty level, and to help them maintain a reasonable overall level of health care. Real life, real action, real answers. Real talk, real action, purposes. Joe, uh, why don't you take us uh, 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 and, and let our millions of viewers worldwide um, uh, know what uh, you, you gentlemen are, are, are trying to do. Yes, sir. First, I'd like to say thank you for allowing me to be on the show, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here um, to express some of the things and problems that we have in our communities. And real talk, we move that word out because a lot of people do a lot of talking, so we said real life, real action, and real answers. We thought we need to bring the solutions to the people that's uh, having problems today instead of talking to them um, so much and bring the action on the floor. Um, one of the problems that we have in, um, in our communities is that we have made, as black people, we have made a covenant with um, hatred. We have made a covenant with um, disrespecting one another. We have made covenants um, basically with the government of the wicked aspect of the government. Uh, we have made covenants with them, and those covenants, we have to break those type of covenants so we can make a covenant covenant with ourselves. So we need to be focused on the realities of what we're trying to do and not bowing down to powers that's going to control us, but stand up to those that we can break those evil powers in our communities. So real life, real uh, action, and real answers is getting straight to the point. And I brought on some beautiful brothers that I have a lot of respect for. Uh, one is Pastor Wiggins. We get the name straight on that. And um, both of my dear friends are Ronald Drake Stewart. And we just know, we, we want the public, we want the people to know that we want to work with various um, groups and communities. But we want the reality to stand up. We don't want the same thing that led us into slavery, to put us back into that type of mindset. We're pushing forward, we're pushing real, and we're pushing um, real life, real actions. And real answers. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to bring in um, um, my favorite, one of my loving brothers, Ronald Drake, to um, express to you all actually what we're doing with this program. It came to me in the spirit um, to start this program and to push this program into the right minds and the right spirits of uh, people. It's a lot of people that's doing a lot of talking, but a lot of people is not putting on a lot of action. You know, we got a lot of problems in our community, uh, violent problems. We're trying to stop the violence, increase the peace. We're working in that area. We know where the violence has started from. If you go back to uh, Adam and Eve, you'll see where Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. And hatred was in amongst one of the sons. Hatred, wars, revolutions, start violence. And to stop that violence, we're going to have to educate our community and educate our young people 
And I think that's the first style of reality. And I would like to bring on um, Ronald Drake to explain more to you about what this program is. Thank you very much. Well, I, I appreciate uh, Mr. Robinson for uh, allowing us to be on this show. This show uh, is, is uh, pertaining to saving our youth, quit this black on black crime, um, stop them from uh, knowing, making, making a difference like letting them know that they are very important in this world and we got to be the foot soldier far as showing them what they're supposed to do, but we, like we learned. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a thing with me that I'm not a role model. I don't want y'all to misinterpret what this conversation is about. My conversation is about saving these youths and because I created a lot of these things that they're going through right now. I'm not the role model. I teach them how not to be like me. So they don't have to do 24 years in prison. And to order to, uh, uh, I had, I, it took 40 years for me to be, grow up to be a grown man. Now, since I am a grown man, I got to save some of these kids' lives that I, I confused their lives. I taught them how to do drugs. I taught them how to sell drugs. I taught them how to fight. I taught them how to do all the negative things that's out in these streets right now. So it's my job to save their life. Pull them in and let them know I love them and give them a sense of direction to knowing that everything's going to be all right. But we all got to put ourselves in a position that they're in and save our kids. That means going door to door. You know, we have to stop and tell people to stop standing in front of the house selling drugs. If everybody do that, it won't be no drugs in the neighborhood. It won't be no confusion in the neighborhood because we took our streets back. In order to take our streets back, we got to first take our kids back. We got to let them know that somebody out here love them and we care about their lives. We don't want them to die out here dealing with all this confusion. And like it's going to be all right at the end of this day because God is first. When we put God first, he gives us the, the sense of direction to go make any kind of change that's necessary to make us a whole person. So uh, I'm going to turn the mic over to Brother Wiggins, uh, Reverend Wiggins, because uh, we need a, a spiritual message going coming about right now. But uh, all I'm saying to everybody that's listening to this this uh, report is let's save our kids. Let's take one house at a time, one child at a time. Give them something constructive to do instead of destructive. Let them know that they're going to be all right. Put our feet in front of the other and, and lead them and take them by the hand and take them one step at a time and let them know it's going to be all right, man, so we can save their life because we all they have. And when we go as a people and we keep doing us genocizing, we study killing each other and we study looking at each other and thinking it's all right, but y'all fail to realize it's a whole unit of people is being destroyed. We ain't going to have no future if we don't save our future. Y'all have a blessed day. And I'm glad you uh, opened up your minds and your ears to take a little time out with me. Greetings, everybody. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say my um, connection with Brother Joe in terms of assisting him with uh, the program that uh, he's endeavoring to uh, start. Um, he needed a facility in which to uh, work out of. So I provided the facility for him to work out uh, the program. But uh, Joe and I go back great many years. We grew up as little guys together. Uh, so he had some ideals about what's taking place in our community today. Um, looking at the, like Ronald said and Joe said, the amount of crime that's taking place, um, how our youth are running rampant and the, the black on black violence. Um, and we do need individuals who have had experiences with the streets themselves and have overcome the streets, who have overcome some of the challenges that out there in the streets to uh, reach the young people. Um, I've been at this work myself for about 14, 15 years. Uh, I'm a professional substance abuse counselor, been pastoring about five years. Uh, on the professional level, I've been doing this and I have some certain skills that accompany uh, what, I, what it is that I do. Um, 
uh, I have some transitional homes in which for prisoners who come out of prison uh, that provide um, a place for them to come and uh, begin to teach them some skills on how to uh, live in a society without re recidivism or without, without repeating or without going back to prison. So, uh, and, and even what I do, I, I house younger guys too who are coming out of prison, even those who, before they go to prison, giving them a place to stay, teaching them some of the skills that they need, how to be a productive individual, how to become a man or how to be a man. So, so um, that's what I, I kind of like do, but uh, I'm here to help Joe as a guide, as a mentor, as a director, as a, a supporter, uh, and some of the ideas that he have, using some of my expertise, using some of my connections, uh, using some of the influences that I have, uh, and trying to help him. Um, I, I work with many other programs in trying to uh, redirect some of the youth. Um, many, many of the efforts that many of us are uh, trying to do is, is still in the talk stage. We, we, it's still a lot of talking, and people are looking for some action now. Uh, people are looking for some things to be done. We've been talking about stopping the violence. Uh, and we know that our murder rate is at 22, 23 so far this year. And uh, people are, are tired of hearing individuals talk about, okay, uh, this is going to take place, stop the violence. Uh, many programs which are endeavoring to do, uh, put an end to the violence, but any, any action isn't taking place yet. So um, if we get a number of the programs together, I believe, and we all do what it is that we do individually, that we can begin to make a difference. Um, so, so we need. It's not just a one man show. It's many people <laughs> trying to conquer the problem. So, exactly. so if, if if each of us do what it is that we're uh, have specialties in, we can begin to uh, uh, turn things around. Um, so, so I'm, I'm I'm happy and excited to be able to help Joe. Uh, and what it is that he's trying to do and turn some of the uh, mindsets of the young people around. Well, let me ask a couple questions here, if I may. Okay, uh, Joe, I'll, I'll uh, address uh, this question to you. I've got several, but how do you plan on implementing some of the programs such as gang violence? Let's start with gang violence, or excuse me, gang prevention. Well, um, as Pastor Wiggins said, we're going to um, try to have um, facilities for them to come um, where they can talk. Um, one of the purposes, um, another purpose we had was to allow people to speak out of their hearts and what they wanted to say without um, pushing any religion on top of them, but but using spiritual principles and allowing young people I know to deal with young people, you have to allow them to be themselves. First of all, get them to connect to who they are. So they can be who they know better, they'll do better. And so what we're trying to do with that prevention thing is a lot of facility where they can come in if they want to talk about they lost mother, they lost father, they don't have nobody to um, talk to or, or give them any type of uh, incentive of uh, what to do with their lives. That's what we're here for. We want to sit them down and say, hey, man, you got a rap song, rap. You know, you, have, you, want, you got some talent. You got um, talent bigger than rap. Bigger than the basketball. You know, I mean, you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer. Words were said to Malcolm X at a young age that he couldn't be no more than a carpenter. When the school teacher, uh, he told him, wait a minute, you know, uh, Malcolm was greater than that. Many of our great men was told they couldn't be no more than a sellout. You know, go along to get along type of thing. We don't want our young men with that type of mindset. That's the same same slavery mindset has been put on us since the beginning of time. And we're going to break that power. You know. Well, you know, I have great admiration for you gentlemen, you know, trying to trying to make a trying to make a difference, you know, in the community. That's very very commendable and and hopefully uh, you know that um, you I want you guys to be very successful, okay? Um what about um, job creation? Um, job creation is um, um, Pastor Wiggins is 
pretty sharp in that area. Okay. Because um, I'm just throwing these questions that's, that's out. That's very so good. That's very good. Any of you can feel I'm aware of this. But I, I love it. Hip Pastor Wiggins getting that area mm -hmm. because he helped me so much. When I came out of prison, I want to put this on the floor. Uh, just to tell the truth, there's nothing to hide because the past is, is the past. But I did 25 years in prison myself. And uh, when I came home looking for a job, Pastor Wiggins here was always there to uh, assist me in, um, in my better thoughts. Because, you know, he's seen the change in me. And, you know, change don't come until you change what's in your heart. So that's the main thing. To even start off thinking about a job, you're going to have to be to change your lifestyle. Because what got us in there, uh, we had jobs, but we still went to prisons. We had jobs, but we still did things, the bad things. But it didn't make us bad people. We just didn't have the proper knowledge of ourselves. You know, so uh, getting more effective with the job. I went to many people when I came home. I went to um, Pastor Larry Holly. I went to so-and-so and so-and-so, you know. But somehow I still wasn't found on the, on the job. Then they did background checks on me. Uh, in different places that they hired me and then they fired me the next day. You know, so it's going to be hard for a lot of our um, people that's um, younger people. And young people think like this. All this money out here, where is it going? I don't have any of it. They want money. They want clothes. They want things. And if you don't provide them the proper jobs and the proper avenues to teach them, how to work those jobs, then they're going to pick up guns, they're going to rob, they're going to steal, and that's another uh, a result of violence today. So we have to um, try to understand the depth of the, the root of a problem. And that's how we can really get to young people's heart. We don't want a slavery, slavery movement. This is a different type of movement, I think, in my spirit and my brothers. Um, we came up on the strong rooted um background. And even in prisons, when we stuck together, we stuck together. We didn't bag down. I mean, we had to, uh, we, we, did, we tried to do the right thing, but when the wrong thing presented itself to us, whether it was the administration, the government, uh, whoever it was, we took a stand. In the process of taking that stand, many of us was rolled out to different prisons. We was um, beaten. Some of us was even killed. And this is why I want to say why I got uh, on the air to my brothers in prison and stuff. We haven't forgot you. We're going to fight for you. Um, we fought for Geronimo Pratt. We fought for uh, H. Rap Brown, Kwame Torre. All the brothers that stood up was considered troublemakers because they stood up to want to make a change in their communities. You know, That's okay if they call you a troublemaker. They call Jesus a troublemaker. But he kept on preaching that word. You know, it, this is not about religion. Sometimes we get thrown to the left or thrown to the right because you ain't in a certain type of religion or you in a religion or like some religion is a disease to another religion. You know, we are one people. There's many branches on that tree, but it's one root. If we don't come together under nothing more than solidarity and stand as one, as Dr. Martin Luther King said, and many more, if you don't have nothing to live for, what do you have? What do you have to die for? So, I think in what in answer to the question about the job creation part, um, what I think the ideal is to that when the younger guys come together, when they're all brought together is that there is some brainstorming in how to come up with jobs. Not that we'll create jobs, but that can be possible too if we can get corporations, businesses on board who have the capital to hire individuals. But brainstorming among ourselves, what can we do to create jobs for ourselves? Entrepreneurship, uh, starting lawn services, uh, snow removal services, painting services, in that sort of job creation part, and finding other companies that will get on board too. Uh, where can we get the monies 
uh, to fund jobs, to give people employment, those type of things. And, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's kind of general right now, but to get some other people on board will help create jobs because I think that's the that's the ideal that we all want in America is to create some ideals. I, I, I was I rode around the city today and I, uh, it's particularly the north end of Flint at how at one point the north end was uh, real beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was nice, it was clean but now if you if you you ride and you look the city has been stripped, it's been robbed been wounded um, and and desolate, and the, the the attitude for the North End and his people look just like the community, desolate. I mean, I looked at and uh, I preached a message. Uh, I've been robbed, attacked, robbed, wounded, and left for dead, and and, and I looked at Flint uh, with the exit of General Motors. Being having the income taken, I looked at that sort of the people being robbed, being attacked in the loss of their jobs. I looked at how the city is being stripped, uh, the houses, the, the I mean, if you how many houses are being stripped of aluminum, they're being stripped of their furnaces, and I mean, it's just abandoned homes. It looks ugly. It looks, I mean, it just looks terrible. I mean, so. How do you expect people to feel when they have to live in a community like this here? And, mm. and, and, and our goal is to try to reach the mindset of the individuals that live in the community. That look here, that we have to change ourselves if we're going to change anything. Mm -hmm. So we have to begin by changing the mindset of the people to think better about themselves. Uh, I looked at like the have-nots are taking from the haves. The haves used to have more to give, more to have nots. But when General Motors left, the have nots got short. So, so now we have the have nots going to take from the haves mm -hmm. because it's about survival now. Even though they're selling drugs or buying whatever it is they're buying, with it, the have nots still have to have. Even though there's no General Motors, there's no, there's a job shortage. The have nots still have to survive. Absolutely. So who's going to give it to them? If they can't get it from, for themselves, they have to go to those who have. Even if it means robbing them, stealing from them, breaking their homes, they got to go where it is. That doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it right. doesn't make it right. But when we're in survival mode, mm -hmm. uh, the have-nots, if there's no place for them to go get it, then they have to go get it from where it is. Even though it doesn't make it right. But that's kind of like the mindset. And I think that's the way... Even though crime has been around for a long time, it has never, it has never been at the level that it is to this today here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And it's never going to go away, unfortunately. It's not going to go away. Because, you know, uh, uh, the haves are gone. They left the have nots here. Absolutely. All right. Uh, there's only so many jobs that are available. All right. Absolutely. There's nobody, and I've talked about this too, uh, that. Um, uh, in the mayor's office or in Lansing that cares anything that great uh, that much about Flint, all right. And 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 as uh, um, Louis Farrakhan says, you know what I mean. We you, black folks got to do for self, all right. We are the ones that got to create the jobs. We are the ones that have to create the opportunities for us because white folks are not going to give us nothing, mm. all right. We have to encourage, you know, our children and, and, and friends and grandkids and aunts and I mean nieces and nephews get that go back to school, get that education. Because education is what's important. Education, education, education. All right? And and, and, and as um uh Ronald was talking about, um we've got to take this message to the street day in and day out, twenty four seven, all right? Let these people, not only the children, but 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 the, 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 but the old folks know that we're out. We we care. Yes, sir. All right, we care for you. All right, and and uh, and keep giving this message over and over and over. All right, you're gonna get those naysayers. We all do. All right, I get naysayers about this show. Why do you do this? Well, look, and I tell them. I said, well, look, what are you doing? All right, I'm trying to. 
create something positive, they're just like you guys are trying to create something positive, and I'm going to keep on. Right. I don't give a damn about what they say. Exactly. All right? Period. Uh, um, and that's just, that's just, that's how I feel, all right? Just like they said, uh, Mr. Robinson, that it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. It takes a village to raise a grown man, too. Sure. When you got a, a child's mind. Mm -hmm. If you ain't, if, if the man doesn't got to 40, 30, 40 years old and rolled up and he still got the mindset as, as a, a minor that like they 13, 14 years old, then it's going to take that village to raise that man, mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. to make him a man to take care of his responsibilities of mm -hmm. the seeds that he brought to the world. Sure. So in order to do that, he got to have training from the people mm -hmm. that he can get training from. That's the people in his own community that he go to the house that Miss, Miss Ann is at, and her kids are so obedient because they believe in their mother. They believe in they follow. They believe in the right things that they tell them to find the food for thought to make their mind elevate. Mm -hmm. So when you elevate yourself, you elevate every idealization that they say that we couldn't have. Sure. Man, man is mind. It governs your whole existence. When you quit thinking, you go brain dead and you die. Mm -hmm. So I try to use my seven senses, and a lot of people in the world use only four and through life. I use all seven of mine because God gave me all seven of them for a reason. Well, with, so, that, with that point... I'm sorry, but we have to bring this show to a close, and hopefully you gentlemen will come back, and I wish you all success, all right, uh, in real life, real action, and real uh, uh, answers. answers. I want to thank you, Mr. Gibbons, Mr. Pastor Williams, and Mr. Stewart, uh, for coming on the In My Opinion show. This is, I also want to thank our technical staff and our, and our millions of viewers worldwide. Until next time, stay focused. Mm -hmm.